I seem to be, or maybe I should properly say, my mind seems to be addicted to fear. And it's been this way seemingly my whole life, but especially the last 20 years. Um, and what I really like about the videos that I've seen of yours over the last week is you seem to make room for people to um, work out their mind as opposed to trying to improve themselves, which doesn't need improvement. Um, when I sit down to meditate, when I first sit down, I it's very pleasurable because I can I feel like I'm quiet. It just feels peaceful. And then the mind starts getting in. And I've been practicing a awareness watching awareness meditation or being aware of my attention just to sort of anchor myself. So I probably said enough. <laughs> but um, I'm really, really interested in getting free of this um, um, mental loop. Um, I hear that I'm not the mind or the thoughts. And then when the sensations kick in, it just feels intense and it feels like I'm just that, like a, like I'm stuck like a wetsuit or it's, I don't seem to be able to distinguish between what's real and what isn't real. And I'm like, so. Let, let's look at fear first. It's really important to recognize that fear is imaginary and that fear is always in the future about something that hasn't happened yet. And the mind that identifies and believes itself to be a physical body is driven by fear. Therefore, it's really key to allow the fear to, to arise. Instead of trying to get rid of the fear, is allowing it means any way it appears, it doesn't ask you permission, and who you truly are is not affected by it anyhow, yet the I thought reacts to that fear. Therefore, when fear arises, instead of resisting it, which perpetuates it, now really take a look and examine it. Like, um, just like studying anything that of an interest for you or anybody. You look at the fear and you kind of examine, okay, I notice the mind is scared of something. Something that is not happening now, based off memory of pain in the past, and now it projects it into the future. Okay, yet is the future happening right now? Has it come yet? No. Okay, so you start looking at it that way, and it's the fear is is always of losing something, the fear is of not gaining something, the fear is of death, the fear is of pain, the fear is of anything the mind gives significance and it is afraid that it's going to lose or not going to gain. Therefore, it can be projected or superimposed by different people on different objects or events. So for someone, they are afraid to move from one apartment to another. For somebody else, it's to move from one country to another. 
for somebody else is to lose their job for somebody else is to be afraid that, that the body is not going to be healed it doesn't really matter it always some the mind always finds something to scare itself about an event that is not happening therefore it's really be curious about the fear when it appears within you take a look at it instead of no 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 the mind is not supposed to be afraid no 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 I'm not supposed to experience this fear now this fear is really bad which if you really examine and you ask after every sentence is it true you would come to see that no it just the mind reacts to it makes a story out of it the fear is a catalyst for the mind to wake up so is it negative yes it appears like because it's it's fed by negativity yet that negativity drives the mind to free itself from it to return back to who you truly are therefore it's to change the attitude towards fear when it appears if it appears and change the approach to it how the mind approach the fear itself that's all therefore it, at least it's less reactive to the fear itself and then you leave the sensations alone the physical reaction in the body because the mind is a funny thing what it does it imagines something of the future like what if I'm not gonna get what I need what will happen if I lose such and such yeah now instantaneously generate a bodily sensation and now it reacts to the sensation it doesn't like it so negative thoughts appear yeah. now what it did it distracted itself to really watch what it was scared about which was imaginary because it moved yeah the thought appeared about the future which was fear itself what right. what if i lose a uh, whatever generate bodily sensation it doesn't like it it reacts to the sensation and more negative thoughts appear and then you don't go back and examine even if the fear is real oh, okay yeah that's right okay watch okay. that mm. awakening is you are studying yourself you cannot study the real self of who you are you are already that you have to study and really watch carefully what you're not although you think or the mind thinks it is you you have to study that one the one who is thinking itself to be you the one who scares itself the ones who reacts to bodily sensation yes it reacts to it if it's a pleasant sensation it likes it it wants more to more of it that's a reactivity if there is unpleasant sensation it doesn't like it it wants to get rid of it this is reactivity it reacts both directions study yourself which is not the real self then what reveals is the whole play of illusion and when the mind stop taking itself to be real then it can relax stop reacting to the thoughts the unpleasant or unwanted thoughts and as it rests 
then the beingness of who you are can shine through without the mind doing anything. The whole work is actually undoing. Yes? Yes, I've, I, I see how I've been doing the opposite of that. <laughs> I've been keeping my mind on beautiful thoughts of truth, of God, of spirit, in, an, in a way to drown out the fear and all that. And that hasn't worked. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So even to the point of it doesn't matter what the, I seem to be afraid of. Because even it's gotten to a phobic point in certain areas of my life. So that doesn't matter. The important thing is when it arises, it's not about what I think it's about. It's about that it's, um, okay, it's just about questioning the thoughts or the fear. Yeah. And not doing anything to try to get rid of it. That's right. right. Anyway, the fear is thoughts and the thoughts appear and disappear yeah they're not permanent then it's like waves in the ocean you're the ocean and the waves appear in that ocean okay when the fear appears make sure to check if it's happening right now or it's about something that is not happened yet because you cannot calm the fear with other images imagination because the fear itself okay. is imaginary okay. you have to discriminate it and the one way that you can discriminate it discriminate it between recognize the fear is a movement into the future and come back to the present moment to what happens in reality and check is it happening now or it's about something you don't even know that will happen because it's in the future you can't really know that it will happen right. therefore discriminate between the movement of the mind into the future and what's happening in the present moment. I'll give an example. The thought appears about something that hasn't happened yet. Future, right? Yes. The content is about the future. The thought appears in the present moment see the distinctions means I'm afraid I'm gonna lose my job the content is about something that hasn't happened because I haven't lost the job yet the thought appears now about something that hasn't happened right. if you can recognize it come back to the present moment and start choosing to live and not the dream because life is happening now and the dream is either past which is finished gone or the future that haven't happened yet and we cannot even know that it will ever happen so sometimes one can approach the fear okay I understand that you're afraid that you're gonna lose the job yet I do not know that it will ever happen let me meet it in life if it happens because life or the reality is always kinder than the, the thoughts about it okay. and then I can always cope with what is happening I cannot cope with something that is imaginary unless I see that it's not real
you nodding therefore you you recognize that you have this recognition now this understanding is good for now yet if the thought appears and about something that might happen you have to look at it in that moment after it appears okay. and start checking it looking it like um, what you like to look at flowers or nature yes. what what is yes. it that you like to look at when I go for walks the woods the trees the pond great yeah flowers yeah. good you looking at the pond or the trees and if you're familiar with that trail you notice the changes as well yes look at the fear in the same interest because if you would look at the pond or the tree like something is not supposed to be there you would react to it you would not really see what's going on with the tree yeah look at the fear the same way like you look at the tree and the pond and nature okay. then your approach would change and that's 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 the key it's how you approach the fear that appeared a moment ago you cannot stop it for from appearing and if it appears again and again and again it's because you resist it and you sustain it because you react to it you don't want it you look at it as an enemy instead of a friend yes and the moment you would start allowing it because anyways it appears because it is charged yeah. and you approach it differently that's when it can free itself the fear wants to be free just like anything else it just attract phantom images and energy that's all So I've been trying to uncover some deep, dark secret from my past that put this fear in me, but that isn't even necessary. I can just work with whatever comes in the moment, just have the courage to stand there and look at it. It's you, a friend coming for a visit. That's right. It, you, okay. don't, you don't even need courage because it comes anyway. Yeah. Just look at it. It's an invitation just for you to look at it if it appears. Okay. It's not so scary. It appears scary because it, for some reason you think it's real. You haven't able to you haven't able or haven't been able to discriminate it. That's all. The moment you start discriminating and you would see it like a dream, unreal, imaginary, because it's imagining something that is not happening yet. The future doesn't exist. We just imagine it. We don't have a, a, a proof about the future other than a memory of the past. Well, it's, yeah. Several years ago, one of these phobias, I was driving on the highway and all of a sudden I started to feel weird and I reacted and I got off the highway. So ever since then, every time I have to go on the highway, it's like, <clears throat> and then when I get on there, I can barely, I can't do it well. So... It seems like when I'm doing it, when I'm driving, there must be thoughts happening that I haven't recognized that are scaring me because, okay, so I'm just going to... Um, One second. Take a so basically what happens, you went on the highway and then you had 
particular thoughts or something that scared you and you went off the highway the next time you come up on the highway right away the mind has a memory of this negative sensation yeah, yeah. and you experience the sensation you start reacting to it and that scares you even more if you can just be with the sensation get on the highway and get and park on the right side put your blinkers and observe your breath watch your body sensation maybe you sweating whatever I'm just just be with that a little bit let the wave pass through start driving again if you need to you stop put your blinkers again and you go through it until you would watch this the sensation and you might realize that maybe when you have a stomach ache, stomach ache or or headache it's more unpleasant than that sensation <laughs> you just didn't really look at it and examine it to really look and see what is, how it feels without making a story in your mind discriminate yeah, when your mind makes a story thoughts and the bodily sensation as it is yeah because I've um, I feel like I can't handle life a lot I guess because I believe like I'm not capable I get on the highway and I think I can't handle these <laughs> I think it's um, yeah I've done a really good job scaring myself I can see that it's um, not that you cannot handle life myself. For some Excuse reason, me? it's not that you cannot handle life. For some reason, you didn't really took a, took, took a look instead of life at the bodily sensation that the mind reacts and the thoughts themselves. Okay. okay. There, there is... You heard the, the work of Byron Katie? I've heard of it, yes. Check, check, check her website, watch her working with people, learn to examine your thoughts. This would help you a lot. Okay. And whatever thoughts would have, sometimes people really say, Man, I don't like her. It's not about her. Discriminate that. Leave it alone. The four questions and the turnaround are very if you learn to examine your thoughts the way she guides it's precise and it works okay. so it's not about her okay it's about learning to question your thoughts it's learning to really observe how the thoughts react to unwanted thoughts and how thoughts react to unpleasant sensations okay. if you go into it this can transform every aspect of your mind and therefore can transform every aspect of your life and then I'll be able to see what's really true of myself yes <laughs> My Mo more important see what's not true then the, right, tr that's right. the truth that's right. remain and shine through clean okay. clean removing by seeing yeah because it's not clear to me now because I'm preoccupied with all this stuff in the mind and I'm not haven't discriminated And this work could help me discriminate that and then then it will take you deeper anyhow okay yes don't let let the mind go through the process who you truly are never moves it's ever okay. free except if the mind is reactive and it's causing like fog and veil and confused this work really can support and help you and you can keep listening and and um, 
Yeah. Keep listening. Yeah, watch the mean? videos. Watch the videos. Oh yes, your videos. Yeah, or anything that <laughs> anybody that um, is clear enough and pointing. Also, it's good to read or hear Eckhart Tolle to understand the structure of the mind. Okay. Have you heard about him? I have. I've read The Power of Now. So, and I actually saw him about 10 years ago. I, I was at a retreat with him. Good. Yes. Yes, I liked the work. The thing is that let your mind be immersed with the work of Byron Katie for some time so it's active then it's it's gonna start undoing its own thoughts and beliefs okay I'm just gonna write this down all right okay that's my first thing Byron Katie yeah because, I really, and I, because I find that if we finish the conversation tonight or today for you and you left without any tools to work with the mind and the thoughts it's not good enough so it would be maybe a nice understanding a nice conversation and you would have insights and then tomorrow that doesn't exist in the imagination if it appears at least your mind has the ability to start using tangible tools, practical, that are accurate. That if you put it into use, it's useful. Thank you so much. I watch your videos almost constantly a lot because you said that having contact with someone such as yourself can help people wake up so I really want to wake up out of this dream so I'm going to look into Byron Katie and keep watching you and I love the video that was posted today you were talking about mingling among people without thought, without... Anyway, I loved watching it. It was very animated and inspiring. It, it sort of lifted me. So oh. I have that and I have Byron Katie's tools. And um, Yeah, she has many videos. It's really good to watch her okay. work with the people doing the work. She has lots of videos, I think, in YouTube. She has on the website, she has everything and she's available as well. So, I think. And, um, yeah. This is a good beginning and I'm, I'm open to any time there's, if you have doubt and you feel stuck somewhere, if you, there's lack of clarity, we can schedule a Skype call just like that. L go, let the mind really be immersed in the work. And one of the ways that the sages pointed out for thousands of years, it's hearing it over and over and over again until it's actively awakened inside the mind within you. Thank you so much for your generosity. You're most welcome. Do you have any other questions for now? No, thank you. Very good. I wish you all the very best. And uh, any question, any doubt, write on Skype or email and then we can schedule a time if it permits. Okay, thank you so much. You're Thank most you. welcome. We'll do that. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.